God has done, and, and uh, just looking forward to a celebration of why we celebrate Easter. And actually, I've got a lot of scriptures today, and uh, we t- normally talk about the stone being rolled away and the tomb is empty. But we're going to talk about what the blood of Christ means, what things have been done through Christ, and specifically how uh, the first Adam, if you would, we know committed, we we'll call it high treason or moved into sin. And the second Adam, which is Jesus, paid the price for you and I. So if we're going to go in our Bibles, let's just take our time. Father, we just thank you that as we read the scripture today, that it will reveal to every one of us something special, something fresh, and something new. We thank you that as we celebrate Resurrection Sunday and before we're finished, Lord, we're going to celebrate communion and just the breaking of bread and the celebration of what you have done for us and how it uh, pertains to our lives. We give you praise and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And amen. Uh, John chapter 19, verse 30. It says, so when Jesus had received the sour wine, now he's on the cross, and and so the scripture talks about how he's going to declare... It is finished. And uh, if you do a word study on the sour wine, it actually was meant as a painkiller. But we know that Jesus refused the sour wine, not because it was sour and not because it was wine, but he refused it because it was actually a painkiller. And the Bible says that he needed to bear on his body all of the sickness, all of the disease, all of the sorrow. Anything you can think of, Jesus had to go through, and he chose to do that. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. He gave up the spirit because he declared, It is finished. In your life, God wants to declare something to you that it is finished. The Bible says when the word said it is finished, it means to be perfected. So whatever situation you need, God has perfected your situation. Uh, Go with me, if you would, to Revelation 13, verse 8. Revelation 13, verse 8. Now this is something that we want to look at, that everything that you need has been done in Jesus. Everything that you need. We talked about it a little bit about uh, Anne and I this morning from the foundation of the world. We're going to look at this. It says in verse 8, And all who dwell on earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life, of the Lamb who has been slain from the foundation of earth. The world. What that means is that Jesus Christ was on his way as your second Adam to be slain from the beginning of time, from the foundation of the world, to pay the price for you and I. So you see, sometimes we spend our lives trying to pay for a price. We're trying to pay a debt that you could never pay for. You could never completely pay a debt. You could try, you could try, you could try. But Jesus, from the foundation of the world, has set his life so that he would pick up his life and lay down his life of his own free will. God had a plan for you. No matter what you're going through, God has a plan. You need to think about this for a minute. From the beginning of time, Jesus said, I will lay down the life. I will make perfection for you. I will give of my life so that you can have life. If you're here this morning and say, Pastor, I don't feel like I'm having much of a life. I don't feel like I'm having much of a prayer time. I don't feel like I'm having much of an answer to prayer. I want to declare to you today, from the beginning of time, Jesus Christ has laid his life down from the foundation of the world. No matter what you're going through, God has a message for you. You may say, Pastor, I just feel like it's all messed up. How many know that if God had you on his mind from the beginning of time, then God has had your answer on his mind from the beginning of time? Go with me to 2 Peter 1.3. 2 Peter 1.3. We want to kind of work through this here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 2 Peter 1.3. It says... In his divine power, God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to glory and virtue, who has given us exceeding great and precious promises, that through these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, through these, how through what? So Jesus is talking about how you can get something. Jesus is talking about that he's been given you all things that pertain to life 
and godliness. So if your life is a mess, God has said, hey, I sent my son that so that you can have life. Amen. We know the word says you can have it abundantly. The word says that you can have it as God would have it. But how do we get it? How do we get that God kind of life? It said in verse 4 that you've been given exceedingly great and precious promises. How many know a promise is a promise? Amen. How many know a promise is something that is declared over you, for you, and to you that you can use in your life no matter what the situation comes along? God, if your word says that the blood will never lose its power, if your blood was shed at Calvary so that my sins are forgiven, then every time the devil comes along to try and gnaw on your brain and say, I don't think your sins are forgiven, you can say, wait a minute here. According to Isaiah, by Jesus' stripes, I have been healed and set free. And the word says that, that from the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God was slain so that I can have the God kind of life. Those are the things, all right? God's plan for you is to rescue you and make you whole. You may have felt like you've lost relationship with God. Adam may have felt like he lost relationship with God. But we know that because of Jesus, restoration has been made whole and restoration has been made one through our living Jesus Christ. When he declared, it is finished, he overcame far more than rigor mortis. Sometimes we think, well, we just we wrapped him up and put him in a grave and we rolled a big stone in front and we had some angels guarding it and suddenly the power went out and Jesus disappeared. And all of those things happened. But far more than that, he shook off those grave clothes, those things that hold you bound, those things that hold you back, those things that hold you captive. Jesus paid the ultimate price when he said, it is finished because of the blood of the Lamb, your life not only is set free, your life is not finished. He laid his life down so that you could pick your life up. Amen? Amen. And that's a promise that we have. Romans 3.10 says that we were born into sin. That's no good. Let's go there. Romans 3.10. We were born into sin. You spend most of your life being well aware that we're in sin. All right, go with me to Romans 3.10. <clears throat> As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So, so far we could say there's a big uh-oh in your life. Because according to that, you ain't getting anywhere. There is none righteous, no, not one. The sad part is that sometimes we spend our lives trying to somehow be righteous. Guess what? You will never be righteous on your own. The only way you're going to get there is through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Through the blood of the Lamb that when He said it is finished, your righteousness, you know, we used to say, well, our righteousness is like filthy rags. You can declare that in your past life. But when you made Jesus the Lord of your life, you did not become some righteous, dirty person that somehow God somehow will just put up with. He declares that you're the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. And so you're now in Christ. You're not in sin. You're in Christ. And so when the enemy comes knocking and says, well, wait a minute here. What about all the wrong things that you do? Get this. From the foundation of the world, Jesus paid for those. Mm -hmm. Jesus paid for those. So maybe there are some things that you need to admit and quit. Maybe there are some things that you need to say, wait a minute here. Sin shall not have dominion over me any longer. I'm not, I've got the mind of Christ. I've got the, the scriptures that God says are mine. And it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 22, In Adam all have died. So, so far we're looking at unrighteousness. So far we're looking at all have died. But we know that physical, emotional, and spiritual things were complete when Jesus said, It is now finished. It is is finished. We're going to go a little more scripture there. 1 Corinthians 15, 22, you just, you don't have to turn there, but that's, it says we, we all, I just said it a moment ago, in Adam all died. So everybody needs a savior. You say, well, pastor, what about the good people? There's lots of good people. There's lots of good people. I had a friend last night was complaining because he went to a mass, nothing wrong with the mass, but he went to a mass. It was two and a half hours long. And he said, way too long. I had to agree. But guess what? Somehow, don't do things to somehow get God's attention. Well, I went to a mass, therefore it's okay. Or I went to a, you know, to, I went to church, therefore it's okay. No. Do things in your heart because Jesus made it real to you. Amen. That's what's important. It's not the length of time. It's just like your prayer time. It's not the length of prayer. God may lead you to pray for long periods of time, or he may lead you to pray for short periods of time. Some of the most heartfelt prayers are simply, Lord, I need your help. 
Okay? And so you've, you've got to begin to make it a matter of the heart. Make it a matter of what Jesus has paid for. So Jesus brought, bought you back. If you were to say, well, we were all in sin. While we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. So every one of us were yet sinners. Every person you can think of were yet sinners. And the Bible says that Jesus bought us back. Jesus paid the price and said, no longer will sin have dominion over you. I'm buying you back. So spiritually, you're bought back. Physically, you're bought back. Emotionally, you're bought back. And you have opportunity to live the life that God has for you. Now, go with me to Romans 5, verse 12. 